It amazes me because of the access that we have to mass media that we think I can just say whatever I want to say. Well, the interesting thing to me is that you're exactly right. You are entitled to your opinion, but you're not always entitled to give it. Sometimes I think we need to be a Christian for more than three and a half minutes and have some conviction and have some uh, loyalty and faithfulness and consistency and a little bit of proven track record before we get out waxing eloquent about things we haven't got a clue about. Do a little bit of life and see God come through for you and then maybe open your mouth and have an opinion about something. But I'll tell you something down the track. It is amazing to me what we want to wax eloquent about. It's amazing to me what we excuse that the Bible never excuses. Gossip, slander, lying, cheating. Things we haven't got the guts to say to anyone's face, but we'll write it. I think, does anybody read the Bible anymore? Does anybody have the fear of God anymore? Does anybody understand just because you think it, you don't have to write it and you don't have to say it and you don't have to be contrary to the word of God and incite division in the body or gossip or slander or murmuring or grumbling or complaining. The Bible calls that one thing. It's called sin. And he says, lay that aside. Oh, we don't like to talk about sin in our postmodern, secularized, privatized, pluralized 21st century. It's not really cool. Makes people feel very, very uncomfortable. But the truth of the matter is, I love the sins we love to major on and we forget the ones that are really killing us and that are toxic, like gossip, like slander, like envy, like greed, like sexism, like racism. Imagine if we breed a generation of chicks that actually are so full of the spirit of God that we produce the fruit of the spirit of God, love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, long suffering, self-control. And instead of competing and comparing. We cheer each other on. We love each other on. And we say, you know what? I don't care about what divides us. We are united around one name. And that's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lords. And he unites us. So if she just got finished waxing eloquently, as she puts it, and speaking so profoundly, she even mentioned, uh, she, she posed a question to the audience, does anyone even fear God anymore? What I want to do is I want to take that question and aim it right back at herself and ask the question, why are you up there preaching? Okay. Why are you standing up there preaching to a multitude of people? See, one of the things that she didn't mention was false teachers. And I think I have the answer as to why she didn't bring up false teachers. Because if she opened that door, she would have to open the Bible and find scripture that supported it. The same scripture that would rebuke her and what she's doing. And so that's why we see in Matthew 7 where the Lord says, it's not what you say, it's what you do that proves what you actually believe. Okay, so it's easy to talk, really easy to talk, but it's the life, the lived life that will prove if someone actually believes what they're talking about. Okay, and if this woman really did fear God, she wouldn't be up there.